Hello and welcome to uh, today's uh, show with uh, George Dvorsky, Westmoreland County native and Broadway and off-Broadway star. George, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. Good to be here. So tell me about uh, your connection to uh, the Westmoreland County area. I was born in Greensburg Hospital. Uh, my family lived in Manor at the time. My uncle owned a costume shop that people know Dvorsky's costume shop. And when I was in second grade, we moved to Green Ridge. I went to Hempfield my entire life. And we school. won't hold that against you. <laughs> but it's funny because my sister who also went to Hempfield, became Norwin school nurse. And then my nieces and nephews all go to Norwin. So I had to share, had to share the allegiance. Great. Now, where, uh, where did you find your love for theater and love for music? My mother said I, I sang before I talked. And when I, in ninth grade, I was playing football. We lost our first game. We had to have hitting drills the next day. I broke my arm because I was the last hit of the day. Stood up and my arm went boop, boop, boop. So I had to go to hospital and I went back to school and thought I need something to do so I joined the choir to take up some time. Found that I could sing and the rest as they say is history. Well let's talk about some of that history. I mean you have uh, played some of the great roles on Broadway, played with some of the greatest uh, uh, divas and, and men of the stage. I've been very fortunate. I have made a living in this business for 37 years which is a feat in itself because this business is so crazy. I, I was very lucky to come in when it was still the golden era of Broadway. Mm -hmm. There were show when I first came to New York, I think there were, uh, every week I would have two or three auditions for Broadway shows. Now it's one every six months at that. But there were shows right and left and it was just a much easier business to get into when I got into it back in 19, maybe, uh. 19 what? <laughs> Back in the early 80s. <laughs> now, how did you get your first break uh, up in New York? I, my first big show was The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Okay. I went to a chorus call. They typed us out. I was number 51 on the list. At that time, you signed. You went to the theater, signed up on the door. You went back at 10 o'clock, and they lined you up on stage and said, you stay, you stay, you stay. I was 51 on the list. I was number one after the first cut. You had to be over six feet tall. Um, and look like an Aggie football player. So I made that cut, then we had to sing, made it through that, and we had to do part of the Aggie dance, made it through that. And there were two of us left, and they said one of you will be in the Broadway show as a replacement, and one will go to the national tour. So I got the national tour, which I was thrilled to do. My mother, may she rest in peace, used to write me two letters a week, and she would never put whorehouse on the, on the envelope. She would write the best little W house, or the best little blank house, <laughs> or the best little chicken ranch. She would never say horror. <laughs> so the cast, would they knew this, and they'd wait until you know, Thursdays or Mondays when I got there, and they'd all stand by the, the mailbox so they could see what she wrote that day. It was, and I was out on the road for nine months with that, and then came back into the Broadway show. Okay. So I closed the Broadway show in 1982. Wow. Um, what... Of all the roles you've played, what would you say, if, can you, I know it's like picking your children. No, Don Quixote. Don Quixote, Man of La Mancha. I just did it in February of this year in Boca Raton, Florida. I'd never done it. I knew the music. Uh, my vocal coach had me sing all the songs. Um, I never even saw the show. I knew what it was about, of course. Right. And I, I was cast in it, and it was, it ended up being, all the stars aligned for this production. The director was great, the theater was great, the cast, which was mostly locals in Florida, was phenomenal. And it, it was, we sold out, five week run. They actually added an extra performance our final week, which sold out in an hour. Wow. It was a thrill and it's, it's become my favorite role. Before that was George and She Loves Me, no one knows that show. She Loves Me, please go see it wherever you see it's playing. It's a great show. Now, did you have a community theater in, in the Westmoreland County area that you kind Apple, of... Apple, Apple Hill? Apple Hill, up in Delmont? Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, when I was in high school. I did a show at the Apple Hill, and I did something in the White Barn. Okay, yeah, in Jeanette, yeah. right? That was up in... No, the White Barn was on Route 30. Okay. It's, I think, an Irwin address, Okay, I believe. Now, what, yeah. what did that mean, uh, to, to have a community theater that you could uh, call your own and, and kind of hone your craft? You... That's exactly it, you hone your craft. I, I was lucky because of those two theaters, I knew a lot when I got, when I went to Carnegie Mellon, I went to the college there, and I knew enough to get me into the school. And, and you, you pay your dues, basically, and just learn the basics of 
theater and, and you know, some people don't know what stage right, stage left, down stage, up stage is. You learn all those things in community theater and just the love of it. You know, people will say that Broadway is the epitome and that's what you want, that's what you reach for, but I have to say, of the six Broadway shows I have done, some of the regional and community things were actually better productions because people loved it so much and wanted to be there. Whereas in New York, I came off the road, like I said, and went to the Broadway company, and I was so surprised that it was a job on Broadway, whereas when you're on the road or working in a regional or community, you want to be there because you love it so much, and that's your responsibility to be there. So when it becomes your job, it loses an edge that is not... Community theater and regional theaters have an edge that a lot of Broadway shows don't. <laughs> and how's that for you? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't reach Yeah, truly, York, right? truly. Um, now we're sitting here at the, uh, on the new stage at the Lamp Theater in downtown Irwin. Yes. Uh, were you a patron of the Lamp uh, when you were I growing? was. I saw a lot of movies here. And the last one I'd seen, I believe, was Romeo and Juliet, okay. Franco Zeffirelli's movie. And I loved it. But the, the three girls behind us were crying so hard at the end, my brother and his friend started laughing, so we laughed at the end of the movie. So that was my last experience. Well, that's so uncomfortable. But my mom <laughs> came to see Porky's here. My mother, once again, may she Porky's. rest in peace, she and my oldest aunt came to see, and she thought it was one of the funniest. I can't believe my mother saw Porky's. Your mom, who wouldn't write whore on the, uh, on the envelope, loved saw Porky's. Porky's. Okay, well. She didn't like the lassie scene. Okay, well, if you know what I'm talking about, yeah. those here. But she thought Google it, kids. she thought it was one of the funniest movies. And it, when she told me she saw it, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, the the lamp has so many memories for so many people in the uh, downtown Irwin area and the greater Irwin area. Mm -hmm. And now uh, it's a new era for the lamp. And you were in here a couple days ago, uh, taking a look. What did you think? When this you renovation is impressive. It's it's amazing actually, because it looks like a a regular full theater now, which before was just a, a movie theater. This can be a great venue for a lot of different things. Now, why should people get involved at the LAMP and get involved in their local theater organizations? The arts are important, and I think a lot of funding has been cut, and, and the arts are slipping away from us, and I think we really need it because it keeps it, keeps it alive, keeps it going. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a, a vacation, so to speak, for some people, and it's a, a respite from all the the troubles that they have in their life normally and their work situations. It's always great to come into a theater and lose yourself in it. George, how can people uh, keep up with you and what you're up to uh, in the regional theater scene and in New York? I have a website, which is georgedvorsky.net, and I also have a Facebook page, George Dvorsky. My, I'm on iTunes, my nephew, because, you know, I'm Uncle George to 12 nieces and nephews and 11 great nieces and nephews. And my, my, my nephew called one day, he went, Oh, George, you're all over iTunes. And I said, well, that's what I do. I have two solo CDs out. I've done a bunch of cast albums, so I'm listed in all, on Amazon and iTunes. And they were all shocked. And I thought, what do you think I've been doing for 37 years? I've been doing something, I hope. So I'm all over the, I'm on, I'm on the internet. Great, on the internet and here at the Lamp Theater, and we appreciate you stopping by. George Dvorsky, thanks for your time. My pleasure, Ben, thank you. And I love this place.